It's early in 2023 and Midjourney has got quite a number of algorithms now that you can choose from when making art. But where exactly do you start? Which algorithm do you choose? I'm actually gonna go through these very quickly today to show you and teach you a little bit about what these algorithms do so you can make a better choice when making your AI artwork. Now to start off, I'm gonna type in slash settings in the Discord to see what Midjourney has. Now there's a bunch of algorithms here, however, this is not all of them. There's actually a few more that are not mentioned here. And uh, we're gonna start off very quickly. Currently version four is the default, but there's a little bit more to it than just version four. We're gonna start off by looking at MJ version one, two, and three. So I can choose from them here or I can type them into my prompt. So let's say I type in a prompt for an image. I'm gonna type dash dash V and then one to produce a version one prompt. And you can see a happy face with green eyes. It's a little bit confusing and uh, it's still a very, well, it's very cool and a really, uh, a marvel of technology really using AI. It's uh, it's a little bit not, it's not quite as good as what we can get these days. A happy face with green eyes. We would expect a happy face and that person to have green eyes. But uh, you can get some pretty cool results with this, with version one. But what happens if we do the exact same prompt with dash dash V2 for version two? And you can see we've got something a little bit more cohesive. We've got a face with green eyes and uh, it's just a little bit more closer to what we mentioned. And it's just a bit more advanced than version one. Because as each version comes out, there are some big leaps in the quality of the imagery, imagery produced by Midjourney. So when we go to version three, which is what Midjourney was using when it really hit its popularity in late 2022, we go imagine dash dash V3, with that same prompt. And now we're starting to get a little bit more closer. It's starting to look a little bit more like at least either a green eye with a face in it or a face with green eyes. That's because version one, two, and three, uh, the past models of Midjourney, if I go to the Midjourney documentation, which I'll link to in the description below, you can see a little bit of information here about these three models. The first model, which is version one, was produced in February and was the default from February to April of 2022. And then April to July was when they was were using version two. And then of course, version three was the default from July until November. So these are the first models that Midjourney used before the current model, which is version four. Now, before we get to version four, I wanna to touch on some of the other bits and pieces that came along before that. And uh, that way you get a better understanding of those and how they work. Now, while Midjourney were actually uh, experimenting with uh, creating different algorithms, they did come up with these test algorithms that you can use also. And these test algorithms come at a larger resolution because when you upscale these images for version three, generally either the width or the height will be no wider than 1024. But when I use the exact same prompt with the dash test, it was a much more advanced algorithm that produced produced better results. Now this one in particular isn't, isn't anything fancy, but you'll notice I haven't upscaled anything and we've only got one result because it produces it at pretty much double the resolution. If you were to make it square, uh, the old algorithm did 1024 by 1024. This test algorithm, if you will produce a aspect ratio of one to one, was 2048 by 2048 pixels. So if I actually, you can see here we've only got one because of the difference in aspect ratio. If I remove my prefer suffix, which I have set to AR 3.2 to 3 to 2, if I remove that and do the exact same prompt again, and you can see we now get two images to upscale. And the reason there's two instead of four is because I'm thinking because of the extra resolution. You'll also notice this is the first algorithm where you can actually see decent facial features starting to form instead of sort of the eyes aren't perfect, but they're a lot better in version three where the eyes were a little warped and version one and two, the facial, facial features were also a bit warped. I actually have another video showcasing this, which I'll put at the end of this video in the video card, but this is where it started to look really really impressive. So uh, the, the test algorithm was actually pretty impressive and you can add in a few other factors such as dash dash creative to take it further. But there's also more to it than that. If I go to imagine one of the other test algorithms was test P where they created a photographic test algorithm, which I will now put in 
and you can see that the dash dash test P produces more of a photographic look. So it was actually a big step up in trying to get photo realistic images using mid journey. And another is interesting addition was dash dash beta was also an algorithm back in 2022, but it was only very short lived and removed. And I believe it might've actually even been replaced by this, but I'm just theorizing there. But when we actually upscale one of these images and check out the detail, it's pretty insane. So you can see the amount of detail and the reflections added in this test P algorithm, even a bit of uh, like a, a lens blur. It really did a great job of producing photorealistic images and still does to this day. It is a great example. And if I go one to one, the image is much larger than your typical mid journey image. So if you're looking to produce high resolution artwork, the tested test P algorithms are great. However, they don't produce images as well as version four. And once again, if you go to the documentation, you can see here a little information about the test models. As you can see, they were released temporarily for community testing and feedback. So they may not be there forever, but they can also be combined with the creative parameter. So you can see below how they've actually shown the difference between test and test plus creative and then test P and test P plus creative where things get a little bit more creative in the way they produce the images. So something worth checking out and it has a few limitations, but like I said, check out the link below if you wanna have a look at the documentation. And this is simply the getting started documentation if you wanna read a bit more about these test models. Now, before we get into version four and these other hidden algorithms, we're gonna to go to the Niji model. So Niji model is actually something that Mid Journey working together with Spellbrush to produce an anime and illustrative style algorithm. So you can actually check out the difference by comparing this to version four and uh, we will later on. But uh, you can see that actually some of this looks a little bit more like anime, including this here, because this is version four, which looks pretty standard. And when you go to Niji, it produces more of an illustration look. If I switch back to Mid Journey and I pop in our prompt, I type in Niji dash dash Niji, or once again, you can go to slash settings and choose Niji, I hit enter. You can see how it's produced an anime style smiling face with green eyes. And of course, if I upscale these, you can see how clean and crisp it is and how true it is to that anime illustration style. So now we're gonna look at version four, which is the current default algorithm. So if I go in and I type in imagine in our prompt, but I remove any of the extras, and pop this in, we're gonna get a version four and we're gonna compare this to the Niji image above. As you can see, it's very anime style, but if I hit enter now, you can see we get some very different images from the Niji style, but very much more detailed, far more accurate looking facial features and a very impressive looking image. But there's actually two version four algorithms. If I type in imagine our prompt and I type in dash dash style for A, we will get a different version of the version four algorithm. And while we're waiting for that, we'll type in the same again with dash dash style for dash dash style for B, which is actually the default again. Check out for A. You'll see this is very much different to what we got before. A little bit more realistic, I think. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is, but uh, it is definitely different and noticeable. And check out the facial features. Everything is very clean, spot on, and an excellent style. But when we switch to 4B, you'll notice 4B has a bit of a different style altogether and is a little bit more unique in how it approaches your prompt. And 4B apparently is the default. If I switch to the Mid Journey documentation, you'll see it has the current model here with version four. If I scroll down, it does talk about version so styles 4A and 4B. So that is actually pretty cool and uh, something I didn't realize until I looked it up. But 4A, 4B, 4A again, we've got different sort of looks. They've actually shown the difference between these two here and these two there. So you can see how we get different results by changing from style 4A to 4B. And uh, it's a pretty cool uh, thing to explore. I highly recommend playing around with 4A and 4B with your prompts to see the difference you get and you can actually kind of determine which style suits you better. Now, I do recommend trying things such as using older algorithms and remixing with newer ones. So that way, if you have something from say version one here, I do recommend trying something such as going to slash settings, turning on remix mode here. Say we want to look at this one, I hit variations version one, and now I type in version four and hit submit. So you can see how it looks cleaner, 
and a little bit more polished while still maintaining the original layout. So that's another thing you can play with is combining the algorithms to get more unique results that way. So I hope that's helped you sort of work out what algorithm is best for you to use, what you can do in the future to produce better images. Otherwise, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I will pop a few more on screen if you want to check those out, comparing some of these algorithms further. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.